Hey, welcome back to the channel. It is a new year. Um, since the last time um, we were in the shop here, we were uh, we worked we got fabric um, glued to the top of the wing, and now I'm just coming along and I have to uh, uh, just get heating up my iron to 200 degrees so I can so I can roll this under and um, get it tacked in place and then we'll get that glued down. And then once that's dry, we can flip the wing over and uh, and we can do the uh, uh, shrinking of the top fabric. So it's kind of a, a little rainy this morning, um, but the temperature's not too bad. So, um, so I am going to, and I'll, all that really means is it's just going to take a little longer for the glue to dry here. But there's not a lot of moisture in the air. I'm not in Florida. I'm in the desert. So, um, although I just came from Florida, and let me uh, let me uh, I'll just I'll just fill you in on kind of how my holidays went. Okay. So on the 24th, I flew to um, Washington D.C. Uh, where my wife was already so that she could uh well so i could see our our newest grandson lincoln and um on the uh 26th i had received a call from my brother that um my dad wasn't doing well and you know he, he was battling cancer for like five years uh mantle cell lymphoma was in his chest and i this is an airplane channel and this little piece of uh, film right here has it has nothing to do with this it will maybe explain a little why you haven't seen me in a while but maybe it's just for me and um, it's cool if you fast forward through this and move on to the actual building I have no problem with that um, but anyway um, uh, Long story short, uh, once I flew to Florida from Washington, D.C., spent a couple days um, in the hospital with my dad, and then, um, then my dad actually passed away. And he was 84 and lived his whole life in, uh, in Florida. And mom and dad still live in the, the house that I grew up in. And um, so there's a lot of, lot of history there. Anyway, so, we, uh, you know, we, we had a, had an awesome funeral for my dad and, you know, talked about, uh, great memories and all that. Dad was of course very interested in my airplane and loved to talk about the engine and all that. He was a, a diesel mechanic for the County Road Department for 30 years and <clears throat> was the kind of person who would give the shirt off his back to anybody who needed it. And so when he said he put his tools down and, retired from the county if you had a car problem and you showed up at my house my dad was going to help you so um it, it's interesting you know I, I i guess i i say this to just say you know um don't pass up an opportunity to spend time with your parents um it, this is a really um this time of life i'm 58 i'm about to be 59 and um, it's just a really strange time when you have aging parents and brand new grandchildren on these two sides. Um, it really kind of uh, kind of messes with your your head. But uh, I, we brought mom back here to California to spend some time with us, and she's doing uh, doing really well. And um, nice change of scenery for her. But anyway. I uh, just wanted to share that with you and uh, it's good to be back in the shop and we'll get some uh, keep moving forward on the build here and uh, yeah so let's get to it if you've ever uh, covered a model airplane um, then you've already done this so uh, it's basically the same basically the same process um, except for putting the glue down through the fabric um, but the 200 degrees is enough to uh, activate the glue and attach the fabric, but it's not enough to shrink the fabric. So that works out. Uh, that works out really well. Uh, 
And so I'm just ironing it down. And that holds it in place <clears throat> when you come back and uh, it gets that kind of first initial tack of the fabric to the glue and then you come back with the glue like you see me do over and over here and you force it down through the fabric and then and then uh, wipe it off uh, and all that so <clears throat> So let me get uh, out of the way a little bit here because my cord is stuck. Okay, we're following the uh, same process that we've done all along. We're just putting the uh, putting the glue on and then uh, coming back and just wiping the excess off. And if you um, if you don't do that. Um, this will leave uh, like ridges and things um, in the uh, in the fabric that you don't that you don't want because the glue has a fairly it's a fairly thick consistency. Um, well, it's it, it's watery, but it's uh, it's it's more than that. And if it's warm enough, um, it won't uh, it won't float out. It'll actually start to dry pretty rapidly. And if I just left that kind of all those high shiny spots will stay there they won't uh, they won't come out so so you just come back and um, you wipe that off and then once you do that it, it leaves you just a really nice a nice smooth nice smooth finish just like just like you see here um, and that's that's what we want so all right so I'm going to um, go ahead and do the rest of this uh, all the way down there and then as soon as that blue turns to that green we can flip this over and shrink the fabric on the other side um, and then uh, after that we'll be doing reinforcing tapes <clears throat> and then we'll measure out for uh, our rib stitching and uh, once we get uh, uh, once we get the top all shrunk and attached everywhere because we will be putting glue um, through the fabric on the leading edge wood area uh, once once everything is uh, tight and shrunk and um, yeah so I'll get this done and then we'll move on to uh, the next step and we'll be getting uh, really close to uh, rib stitching this so the uh, I, I know I do this sometimes. I kind of say where where I'm headed, more kind of for my brain as well. So, um, <clears throat> but what we'll do is we'll do the uh, after the rib stitching, we'll get the finishing tapes going uh, cord wise, and then we'll come back and we'll do our finishing tapes going span wise um, after that. So, okay, let's keep going. The, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, I've, been, I've been watching a number of uh, uh, wing finishing videos on YouTube, just trying to decide, you know, what if there's so many different ways of doing this. And the one that I kind of liked the best was I was watching this one girl who was uh, finishing a pits, and uh, she actually starts out here and she shrinks this a little bit. And then she goes to the to the tip and shrinks that a little bit. Then she comes to the middle, and then does the next bay in and works her way back to the middle. And I kind of like uh, I liked how that um, system that she had seemed to work. So so that's what I'm going to do. And so I've got my iron set at uh, 250, and uh, so what we're going to do is. Uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna shrink right in here and we're not trying to get a full shrink or anything like that we're just getting the big big wrinkles out initially so 
And again, because we pre-glued our ribs, we're not uh, we're not we're not actually hitting the rib. This this is going to help with uh, just getting a nice even nice even shrink, so you don't so you don't end up pulling all the fabric to one end and then coming back the other way. in here. Now I'm going to come around to the front. <clears throat> now we can go, we can go a lot slower over this leading edge because the wood is a, uh, is a pretty significant heat shrink. So Heat sink. <laughs> Heat shrink.
Okay, so we got that. Uh, we got that all taken care of. Uh, everything is all shrunk out uh, really good. It's nice and smooth. Super happy with it. So now we have to come. Uh, now we have to come in and uh, gotta get the uh, some glue over the ribs here. So so we'll just come in and get that. And it may where I've ironed it, it may release a little bit, but that's okay. Um, We'll come back with the iron again after this dries and make sure it's nice and tight. So, Got this uh, our tank perimeter. And when you get a little area like this, you can see where it released a little bit. You don't have to worry about it because as soon as uh, uh, this dries, we come back over the ribs and everything with the iron, and this will be permanently attached um, afterwards because that glue, once, uh, once you heat it, um, it really attaches to each other so without any trouble. Alright, so we'll give this uh, we'll give this some time to dry. Um, you can see uh, you can see that area I was talking about. It just released a little bit there. We'll be ironing that down uh, a little, actually, and beyond it there. But we'll iron all all the way along along the rib again. We'll pick up these little areas where it released right there, um, and and just like uh, we just wait for. Um, this to turn the color of that and then we're good to go so and then we can uh, once we get this part ironed down over here we can come back and we can cut out uh, cut out our tank area we've got a little glue down under there so we'll be ironing a little bit of this to the edge you can see where the edge is right there uh, but we'll be ironing some of this on the inside. Um, just make some little slits in the corner, drop it down, iron that in place, put some glue on that, and uh, and then we can uh, put our reinforcing strips um, on the uh, on the top of the ribs. And I've got my reinforcing tape right handy here, I believe. 
got that right here ready to go so and uh, that we'll be doing that on the top and the bottom and once we get the reinforcing strips on then we'll be we'll be marking um, we'll be marking our uh, distances and there's a uh, chart that shows you if you're inside the prop wash area um, at s certain speeds uh, you know what the spacing is I am based I'm outside my prop wash area my first rib by the fuel tank bay is actually outside that area so <clears throat> that's not of uh, any any concern at all so I'll be using the uh, three and a half inch um, spacing that's based on the speed of my airplane uh, what my V and E is basically at 100, 100 miles an hour is a three and a half inch spacing so I'll be using three and a half inch throughout and just just to give you kind of a pre cursor to how that goes we'll actually start we'll mark it on the bottom where that those locations are we'll extend those vertically to the top um, because uh, of course if you measure them on the bottom or on the t along the top because of the curve of the wing you end up uh, coming out differently um, on the bottom spacing wise so we're going to mark our three and a half on the bottom and then we'll flip the wing over like this extend those lines vertically snap a line across so we can see where each of our where we have to poke through with our needle um, and uh, but hey you'll get to see all that so um, we still have to cover this tip, which I could I could do that now, um, but I, I think I'm going to wait on that until this gets dry and everything, and then we'll go from there. So, uh, okay, probably going to step to something else. Um, not sure what I'm going to do next, but uh, I do I do want to get the fuel lines um, as much as I can without before the wing goes on. Inside the fuselage, I've already got some things set up in there to start that process. So, uh, sweet. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, when this dries, we'll be back and we'll uh, we'll at least continue on with this part. Okay. All right. So I've got uh, I've got everything ironed ironed down now. And there's one area I wish I would have tapered that right there because I don't know if you can see that, but it's left kind of a bump there. I don't, I don't know if I would be able to get something under here to trim it a little or not. Um, but I'll just uh, just put some reinforcement over it, and that'll uh, that'll take care of it. But I really wish it didn't that I could do something about it, but I really can't. I just don't have good access. Um, so we're going to have to let that go, but we'll put a, we'll put a patch over it so that it's uh, reinforced. So that'll be good. All right. <clears throat> So now I'm gonna I'm gonna do the uh, the reinforcing tape. Okay, so now I've cut out the inside of my fuel tank area and I'm just cutting my fabric back oh, about a quarter of an inch or so. Um, and then I'll get that, uh, get that ironed down so I can get some glue on it. And then we'll flip the wing over. All right, so I'm gonna 
what I'm going to do now is mark uh, is mark here, and the plan here is I'm going to go an inch and a quarter, um, an inch and a quarter for the first stitch, and then we'll go three and a half from there. So we want to go. Um, Mark that here. All right. There's our air jet right on the tape there. I'm going to go an inch and a quarter. And we're going to go three and a half. And that brings us about uh, about inch and maybe an inch and three quarters from the back, which is just fine. So, so one and a quarter, then three and a half the rest of the way. Now we'll get the chalk line out and uh, and we'll mark everything. Uh, with the chalk line and then we'll extend the lines to the top and we'll mark that So my rib stitching book actually has the chart in it that shows you um, uh, There are two lines on it um, And uh, there's one the bottom line is for inside the prop wash area the top line is for the rest of the uh, the rest of the wing and um that's where I came up with my um, three and a half inches. And this distance here, um, what's a, it's a it's a requirement that that your um, first first stitch be um, no more than a half half of the rest of your stitches in mind. So that would have been what an inch and three quarters um, would have been fine. So I'm at an inch and a quarter. Just because I like the way that left the that worked out in the total spacing, I could have gone an inch and a half, and maybe been closer to an inch and a half in the back. But uh, that's all good. So um, I wanted to just I wanted to start here an inch and a quarter because I wanted to be as close to my um, my little gusset here as I could be without being right up next to it. So that's how I got got to that location. So. All right, everything's laid out, and now I just have to come in, and before I flip the wing over and do the other side, I've got to come in here right up next to the rib. And I've got to pre-punch these holes, so. So I will go around. I think there's a, I think there's a gusset right there. So, all right. So, I will go. Uh, I'll go and now do all these holes. And once I do that, we can um, then flip the wing over, and I will transfer with a square um, all of these lines to the top, and then we'll be able to. Uh, uh, Debbie can help me do my chalk line again, and then once uh, once we get that, then I can uh, do the same for the top. We'll get all the markings, um, uh, mark the distances, get the chalk line out, um, put the chalk line, 
punch the holes um, and we'll go uh, and then after that we are ready to stitch okay so I've got uh, I've got all the holes um, put in now um, all the way down I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pick up these two right here um, and then uh, everything else is good to go top and bottom so the next video we will start putting some stitching on so yeah thanks so much for hanging out with me today um, it's really good to be um, back to uh, getting some more done here and um, yeah uh, I will uh, I'll catch you later